We all want our investments to do well, though it can be tough to see consistent growth due to market uncertainty, rampant inflation, and the all too common volatility of just investing. So what have I invested in over the past year? In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what I've invested in over the past year and how those investments have done. I'll also give you some advice and talk about my plans for investing in 2022. If that sounds interesting, make sure to like this video to help out my YouTube plans for 2022. Please also subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out every Friday. They'll help you live a life you love through personal finance, and self-improvement. My current investment strategy revolves around investing $381.62 every week. Assuming the typical 10% growth that we would see in the stock market, investing this amount of money every week means that I should be a millionaire by the time I turn 40. Now, of course, the markets can do better or worse over this time period between now and by the time I'm 40. Although, even if the market crashes, it's a good thing to still be consistently investing money because that means it should have time to grow larger as the market recovers. I first started investing heavily on my 22nd birthday, which was August of this year. In that time, I've maxed out my Roth IRA, getting to the full $6,000 contribution limit for the year. And 100% of that has gone toward S&P 500 index funds. Particularly, I hold the Fidelity 500 FXAIX. Now, I think that this is an incredibly important investment to make because as we talk about a lot on this channel, it's very hard to beat the market, so you might as well just buy the market. And especially because this is the investment that I'm making as the youngest, this should also likely be the one that grows to be the largest over time as I get older. Now, as of sitting down to do this video, the portfolio has a value of $6,351.21, and a lot of that is also thanks to the Santa rally. So napkin math shows that this is a 5.87% return on the $6,000 capital. Although that kind of calculation ignores how long ago I got each different amount of shares I've purchased into, etc. Importantly, I have the drip or the dividend reinvestment plan set up on these investments. And that means essentially when I get some stock dividends, that money is reinvested back into the Fidelity 500 fund, and that should grow my money even more. Next up, we have Carol Baskin's Catcoin Cryptocurrency. And this was likely one of my favorite videos of the year. I wanted to see if Carol Baskin's Catcoin crypto project would skyrocket due to the release of Tiger King Season 2. I was hoping that she would mention it and then that would encourage a bunch of people to buy it, thus raising up the price. And by the way, I finally sat down to watch Season 2, liked it quite a bit, also really liked the Doc Angel spinoff. So initially, I only put in $15.22 and currently that's down to about $8.94 or a 41.26% loss. Now that $8.94 also factors in some different rewards that I've gotten for emailing my local congressman for which Carol Baskin has sent me a nice little thank you pin. Now, because this crypto is hosted on the Rally Network, I've also earned some Rally rewards for purchasing into Catcoin. That comes out to about 6.58 Rally, which is worth about $2.40. If you factor that in, that brings the loss down to about 25%. I've also gotten an NFT as part of participating in Rally, though who knows what that might be worth. So continuing within this crypto space, uh, the majority of my money in other cryptocurrency went to stable coins. Pumping my stable coins into Celsius is one of my favorite ways to earn money, and you'll know that based on the amount of videos I've mentioned the Celsius platform. So, so far I've put in just under $375 of stable coins into Celsius and that's earned me $6.74 worth of interest. So the simple math shows that that's a return of about 1.8%. But the thing about that is that I've had only a small amount of money in Celsius for a long time. I started with $30 to test out the system and only recently put in the extra 300 something. So I think that just about 2% for a short amount of time and a small amount of risk in my opinion is quite a nice reward, especially as that's going to continue to sit there and earn me now 10.02%. Although of course, do your own research because this crypto space is kind of dangerous. So keep it on this crypto train. We have different altcoins that I hold on Coinbase. It's really hard to figure out the exact percentage return on this category because I've been pretty new to crypto, lost a fair amount of value due to different fees. I've done some swaps. I've sent stable coins into Celsius and I've also cashed out a little bit. All of my balance currently comes from different Coinbase earn opportunities that I've performed and they tell me that I've made $50 from doing them. However, I'm pretty sure that number is higher. So currently my altcoin portfolio on Coinbase has a value of twenty. $22.62, though I don't intend to do much with any of that, except for potentially make videos in the future going over different ones that sound like they might be tied to interesting projects. Just next to the crypto space, we have NFTs. My main investment into the NFT space was getting into NBA Top Shots. According to one tool, my portfolio is currently worth about $26, and that includes a gift I got from my dad. Thank you. I spent $38.82 on various packs, and most of my loss of value comes from buying a bunch of these Dwayne Wade moments, which are basically worthless. The math shows that this is a loss of 33.02%. Now likely, I'm probably not going to continue to buy top shots because there's a big supply boom recently and that kind of drags the value down on a lot of the cards. Plus the floor price that you can sell them at is lower. However, I might ultimately make a video about my experience because I still think the top shot thing is pretty interesting. Then we have candy NFTs. They have a license for Major League Baseball and I bought two different NFTs relating to the World Series this year. I spent $47.19 on those, although I don't know what they're going to be worth. They recently finally said that their marketplace is going to be up some 
sometime soon. So I'll likely update you and make a video about that once the marketplace is finally launched. Now the thing is, while baseball might be declining in popularity and it's definitely a lot less popular than basketball in America, it is still a big thing culturally and then these candy NFTs being some of the first in this MLB space might make them valuable in the long run. So not a hard asset, but I want to talk about the investment into my education. This year I graduated with four majors, two minors, and a couple different certificates from a top 5% business school. I'm currently back in that institution pursuing an MBA with specialization in data analytics. Of course, the choice to go back was very much guided by the way the job market has been, and it looks like I'm making a good choice. As I talked about in the last video in the similar category, I also tie education into the idea of networking. And in tandem, these two things are going to help me be able to find jobs that are hopefully higher paying than the average. And of course, I'd like to take a lot of this money and be able to invest it. Now, to give you a solid example on this networking front, one of the things that it's helped me to do is start freelance writing. I've currently written two rounds of articles for this one company, and I've been paid about $1,400 to do so. Writing is something that I enjoy, and these were actually very easy projects. So getting paid a good chunk of change to do something you like is very cool. This freelance part of networking, it can lead to some inconsistent, although very profitable sources of income for investments. Another non-physical investment, very similar to what we were just talking about, is the concept of personal branding. This is sort of your online presence, how you present yourself, what people think about, and what they find when they look you up online. And this is something that I've been working hard at this year, again, relating to the whole job search networking thing. You got to have a nice LinkedIn profile, right? And essentially having this good personal brand online can also help you showcase your skill set and your accomplishments. So one of the ways I was able to do that is I started making YouTube videos again this summer. And I've grown a decent amount to, I believe, currently 89 subscribers in what I would consider a short amount of time, especially because I only upload like once a week. Although, of course, I would like to do better for you guys. If you'd like to see more videos, let me know. And of course, I'd like to increase the quality as we go. Suggestions are very welcome. Now, I also started making TikTok videos as well. This covers my eBay reselling side hustle. Now, these videos have done a lot better, relatively. In fact, I just surpassed 5,000 followers last night. Making both kinds of videos has been a really fun way to express my creativity in a way that I haven't necessarily had the opportunity to do within business school. Investment-wise, these videos can essentially be considered kind of a portfolio of my different activities, knowledge, and skills. And the cool thing about building an audience online is that can lead to a lot of different opportunities for you as you grow. So one of these opportunities is referral marketing. And this is essentially what you see in every video where people say, click my link in the description below and you'll get this free thing. And even as a small YouTuber, I've actually been lucky enough to have two different people use one of my Celsius referral codes for all of us to get $50 worth of free Bitcoin from the transaction. So in total, I've generated $100 worth of free Bitcoin for people and they've made me $100 worth of free Bitcoin as well. I'd of course like to say thank you very much. I got another $50 worth of free Bitcoin for using a promo code that I talked about in one of my Celsius videos. And so I've just kind of left my Bitcoin in Celsius to gain some interest. It's up very slightly with the interest to $154 versus my $150 starting total. I'm not particularly worried about this low amount of growth because it's a long-term hold. Now on the TikTok side, I set up my link tree to include links to different shipping supplies that I use. Some of these are Amazon referral links. So if people buy these items or just items on Amazon within two days of looking at them, I believe, I should get a small cut. However, I haven't promoted it as much as I should, and therefore I actually haven't made any money off of these referrals yet. Now, a cool thing about building my audience on TikTok has been that people actually want to go out of their way to support me by buying things from my eBay page. And I honestly really cannot begin to express just how grateful I am for that. It's just such a humbling thing. It's really cool. It's really nice. And it's been a very touching thing as well to know that people, you know, really like the videos and they support them, especially because my first viewer sale actually came when I was barely over a thousand followers. I believe I've had more than a dozen at this point, although I'd like to set up a better list to keep track of these because I like sending people thank you cards when I can. So speaking of eBay, this is technically a small business, so I've made some investments into this as well. I've bought things such as shipping supplies, a lot of inventory, a camera, as well as some other equipment. In total, I've made nearly $8,000 worth of sales since the summer, and the take home of that is roughly going to be about two thirds after you account for fees and shipping. However, this does ignore the cost of goods because a lot of the items that I sold were my own. So I don't know what the cost of goods is for everything that I've sold. And this two thirds estimate also does not count taxes either. One of my least successful investments of the year, although a pretty good video was Acorns. Here's a quick little summary of my argument within the video. I put in the $5 minimum into Acorns in order to get the $5 referral bonus from my dad. And the thing is though, unless you invest a lot of money and that your portfolio continues to grow, Acorns is going to be a waste of your money because you are going to lose out your investment value due to continuing fees. And the thing is, even after you max out your tax advantaged accounts, even investing in something like Robinhood is going to be cheaper than using Acorns. Plus, you can even set up a small recurring investment on Robinhood, and that's basically going to do the exact same thing as Acorns. And I'm just sorry to say you Acorn stands, but it's a waste of money to pay a subscription, which is basically just a really high expense ratio to do something that you can already do for free. Now, a few honorable mentions, we have interest 
interest that I earn from my Bank of America bank account as well as my Ally account. You know, I get a measly 0.01% from Bank of America and then I get 0.1% with Ally or 0.5% on savings. Now this is nothing to be excited about, it doesn't come out to a lot of money, but it has made me realize that I do keep a little bit too much cash on hand rather than investing it. Now I've also made a little bit of money pumping Doge. I had about $10 left over in my Robinhood account from penny stock flipping days and I turned that into about 20 before cashing out before the Doge father appearance. So now what do you think is the best investment that I made this year? What are you going to be investing in in 2022? Let me know. Comment down below. Click the video on screen to watch another that you're going to enjoy and then please add some music, a happy new year full of great investments or whatever else it is that you love to your day.